Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sanket Pisat and welcome to yet another discussion of our case number 5 which was posted on the group. For those of you who are interested in taking part in the discussions, please visit our website endogynetraining.com where you will find the link to join the WhatsApp discussion group and you can be a part of the further discussions as well. So before we start our standard disclaimer that medicine is not an exact science and no one knows everything. These are my personal opinions and may be different from published evidence or conventional teaching. However, if you have a difference of opinion, we'd love to hear from you. So please write your uh, comments in the comment section below the video. And if you have a difficult or interesting case, please do send it to us on endogynetraining at gmail.com and we will be happy to discuss it. Now coming to the question which was posted in the group. Uh, so this is a 35 year old lady. She complains of primary infertility with the HSG shown showing the findings which have been shown in the film. And what was asked is what will be the ideal management for the right tube as well as for the left tube. And you had six options to choose from osteal cannulation with guide wire, tubotubal anastomosis, tubal delinking, salpingectomy, directly IVA for ICSI and none of the above. So let's take a look at what people have answered. Let's we are first talking about the right tube. That means we are talking about this tube. And what we most of the people have answered is the majority of answer is salpingectomy. So let's dissect these answers one by one. Uh, I think salpingectomy and tubal delinking are both tied at equal numbers. And that is, in my opinion, correct because let us first analyze what the right tube actually looks like. So if we look at the right tube, there appears to be a terminal block. So the block in the tube is at the terminal end of the tube. And there also seems to be a bit of swelling in the tube. So it is definitely also a hydrosalpinx. So this is a tube which probably has a minor degree of hydrosalpinx with a terminal block. And we all know that a hydrosalpinx tube is a diseased tube and therefore this tube cannot have any role to play in fertility at all. And hence uh, the treatment would be divided between either tubal delinking or salpingectomy. Coming to the question of which of these two would be the more appropriate treatment to take, I would take salpingectomy if that is possible to do. However, in some cases, there is a tubo ovarian mass which has formed and then one may end up using a lot of cautery around the tube in order to detach it and cut it, which may damage the mesosalpingeal blood supply. And we know that because the ovary and the tube share some blood supply, this may result in further reducing the ovarian reserve of a patient who already has a compromised ovarian reserve and a low AMH. So you could either go with tubal delinking or you could go with salpingectomy depending upon the case. Let us look at the other answers also that people have given. 12% uh, people have said that they would like to do osteal cannulation with guide wire. Now I think that will not be the correct treatment to do because osteal cannulation as a treatment modality is generally offered only for proximal tubal block. So you remember that whenever we are offering osteal cannulation, the block, block by rule has to be a proximal tubal block. Without that, there is no point in offering an osteal cannulation. So uh, definitely an osteal cannulation with guide wire does not seem to be the correct answer. 15% uh, people have also talked about going directly for IVF or ICSI, but that also could be a problem because in the presence of a hydrosalpinx, Doing an IVF or ICSI may mean that this fluid which is contained in the hydrosalpinx which is toxic to the development of the growing embryo may regurgitate beyond the tubal ostea and back into the uterus and therefore it may be embryo toxic to the growing embryo. So uh, I would say that directly IVF or ICSI also is not a good option. Uh, one could go with none of the above in which one would say that uh, I would like to do a diagnostic hysterolaparoscopy and then decide but then that is being non-committal so I really would not go with none of the above. So my answer would be either this or this depending upon the case and the findings that we find inside as far as the right fallopian tube is concerned. 
So having understood that, let us move on now to the next one. And the next is the left fallopian tube. So for the left fallopian tube, uh, opinions are divided among people. And uh, let's start with the majority opinion. And majority of the people again have said osteal cannulation with guide wire. Again, I think this is not the correct um, modality to take because like we discussed in the last slide itself, osteal cannulation with guide wire is a modality for treatment of proximal tubule block at this level. However, we find that this is a case of a mid tubule block. So for a mid tubule block, you really would not have a proximal osteal cannulation that is going to do you any good. Earlier, it was believed that the guide wire could be inserted through the ostium and the guide wire could be passed all the way through the block and then out of the fimbria in order to restore patency. But a lot of times we find that in doing this procedure, the guide wire directly perforates through the fallopian tube and that defeats the very purpose of performing the procedure. So as far as the present day practice is concerned, osteal cannulation with guide wire is to be offered only for proximal tubule block. So that is not the correct answer. Uh, the next answer that we are looking at is 26.9% uh, which is directly IVF or ICSI and this could be a viable answer because you may have you may say that this is a case of mid tubule block and a mid tubule block almost always signifies intrinsic tubule disease so probably there is some intrinsic tubule disease over here and uh, that is why we may consider doing uh, um, directly an IVF or ICSI for this particular patient of course, the because we have discussed the left tube and the right tube differently, one may argue that once you go inside, you will take a call looking up, looking at the condition of the tube, which is fine. However, one must have a game plan in mind before you actually proceed for uh, proceed with the further treatment. So directly IVF or ICSI could be an option. The third option that some people have taken is tubal delinking. So yes. Tubal delinking also may be considered a possibility if there is a hydrosalpings. However, this particular tube does not look like it has a hydrosalpings if you compare it with this tube. And so if the tube does not contain any fluid, then delinking that tube may not be really required. So yes, if one, if the patient is definitely for IVF and you're going in inside anyway, and you find that this tube is a hydrosalpings, the right tube, but the left tube is also damaged, then you may choose to delink both the tubes. That is correct. But if we have to go purely by the HSG picture alone, then I would say that delinking of the other tube, tubal delinking 16.4% is not something that I would pick offhand. Neither would I pick salpingectomy for this tube for the exactly the same reason. So what remains is none of the above. None of the above may also seem like a valid option where you would say that you would like to go inside and uh, deal with the tube as you see it and you may have some variation to uh, what we already talked about. One of the options which I have not discussed or given in this particular uh, video is the option of performing a neosalpingostomy. So a neosalpingostomy is when release incisions are taken here and this tube is opened out to the exterior so that the tube retains or gets back its patency. However, one has to understand that when doing a neosalpingostomy, we are dealing with a tube that is already deceased and hence opening up this tube may really invite ectopic pregnancy and the tube may not be functionally normal though the tube may become physically uh, patent it may not be functionally normal the cilia inside are already destroyed and so uh, opening up this tube may really serve no purpose it may just invite ectopic pregnancy so i think that is all the discussion that is uh, one more point before we conclude some people have chosen tubotubal anastomosis and i think tubotubal anastomosis is also not the right answer for this particular tube the reason being that Tubotubal anastomosis in the present day practice is a procedure reserved only for the reversal of tubal ligation surgery. Previously, it was considered and being done for uh, a patients who had a mid tubal block because of some intrinsic tubal pathology. 
but now it is observed and believed with the advent of IVF and the good success rates in IVF that if the patient has a mid-tubal block then it's probably a diseased tube and we do not really attempt a re-anastomosis of a diseased tube because that is not going to lead us anywhere. So to sum it up in, uh, in one line, we would probably consider a delinking or a salpingectomy for this tube maybe just have a diagnostic laparoscopy and a look at this tube if it feels unhealthy then a salpingectomy or delinking on this side as well and then this patient would probably be followed up by an IVF or ICSI cycle to go ahead with the treatment. So I think that's it for this particular discussion. Uh, I hope this discussion has been useful and uh, if you like the video please click on the icon above to subscribe to our channel and to keep receiving more updates. Uh, thank you and I'll post the quest next question on the endogyny training group soon. Those of you who are interested, I'm going to leave a, a link in the comment section below so that you can join the group and take part in the discussion. Thank you so much and uh, good night.